Hi everyone, this is Bill from AT Makers, and today I've got actually something kind of exciting to share with you. We have a new project that we're working with uh, STEM programs around the country, in Virginia and Maryland and here in Florida. Uh, we're open to anybody else who wants to play. Uh, but we're making mounts and adapters that allow uh, all of your standard AT switches to be mounted on camera mounts. Standard camera mounts, everything from tripods to clamps to goosenecks. Um, and we're giving them away for free. So uh, as part of the AT Makers project, we're trying to get high school programs to be able to help out AT. And we started um, kind of overstepped where we wanted to go. Uh, and we created a 3D printed switch. So this is great. It's, it's kind of amazing that you can 3D print a switch. It's got an adjustable uh, tension top on it. It's got a very simple interior. It's got a little button in there. Uh, we showed the kids how to make it. They had a lot of fun. Uh, but really, it takes two, um, two efforts here. You have to be able to 3D print well, and you have to be able to do some soldering. And it's kind of a phase two project. And I didn't realize that until I went to ATIA. And at ATIA, I was showing, uh, I was showing these 3D switches, 3D printed switches, but I was using this bracket. Now, this bracket is a standard camera bracket. It's $10. I use it with my SLR. I use it with my flash more than my SLR. Um, but when I designed the switch, I also designed a set of mounts. And I made a GoPro mount and a bracket mount. And one of the ones I thought would be kind of naturally useful would be the camera mount. So this one has what is called a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with quarter 20 or the term quarter 20, all quarter 20 means is that this thread or this, uh, this socket is one quarter inch across and the threads are 20 threads, 20 grooves per inch. And it is a really, really common standard. It is one of the kind of the oldest standards that we still live with. It's like 100 years old. It is an ISO standard and it is the official way that you mount camera equipment to tripods and other mounting tools. So if you look at the bottom of a camera, an SLR, in this case, a digital SLR, you'll see that there is a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. This is what you guys just think of as a camera mount. It's really standard. It is able to hold a lot of weight. It can hold um, a heavy camera like this one. It can hold flash equipment, all kinds of stuff, lights. Um, it's really meant to hold anything between a few ounces and maybe five, 10 pounds more uh, if, if you've got a good solid uh, base on it. But the actual, the actual uh, screw and nut itself can hold a lot of weight. So for me, it was an obvious thing to say, well, if I'm going to make switches, uh, I'd want to be able to mount them on uh, camera mounts because there's lots of camera mounts. So uh, when I was at ATIA, the, this camera mount right here probably got almost as much attention as the 3D printed switch, which made me think, you know, this is something we can do uh, pretty quickly. This is something we can do uh, inexpensively get it out to all of the the stem programs out there that have idle 3d printers give them the files and let them print them so I want to show you uh, kind of where we ended up and then I'm going to show you kind of some of the types of clamps and mounts you can get for a very little bit of money uh, if you're looking for camera mounts instead of switch mounts all right so here is a uh, standard quarter 20 mount on this very cool flexible dinosaur starfish looking bracket that can wrap around anything and hold things in place and on it you'll see that you've got mounted here uh, a micro a micro switch a micro light switch from AbleNet and I'm going to go ahead and take this off and show you how this works so the the micro light usually has a uh, 440 screw in, in here that you can mount it to but most people use double-sided tape or Velcro or something to hold it in place. Uh, not very stable, it gets sticky and gross. Uh, what we've actually done here is we've created a small piece of plastic that goes between the switch and the bottom here which has embedded in it a quarter 20 socket. Now this is actually a T-nut. It makes a, a very strong connection. It'll hold way more than the, the weight of a microlite switch. And this costs almost nothing. I mean the T-nut the is about 80 cents if you buy it one of them at Ace. It's about 10 cents if you buy the 10 of them at, uh, at Amazon and have them delivered. I don't know, the screw might be another 12 cents or something. So you're talking about a dollar's worth of hardware plus the time on the 3D printer and the filament 
probably another dollar. So it probably costs about two bucks to make this. Once you've got it, however, you'll see that you can now mount it on any of these devices, okay? So um, I've got a, one of the ones for the Microlite right here. Let me show you a few other ones that we've got designed and, and printed. And then if you've got other ideas of things we should make them for, by all means, let us know. All right, we've got two more here. This one is the original jelly bean. So this isn't the jelly bean twist. This is the oval shaped jelly bean that you've probably got a bunch of uh, in your AT closet. Uh, you'll see that on the back, it originally had two 632 screws. I spent a lot of time figuring out what size these screws were, by the way. Um, again, we've now got a quarter 20 in the center and we can mount this on anything that takes a camera mount. Uh, this is for the other kind of jelly bean, the jelly bean twist. I don't have one handy to show you, but this is a three inch uh, disc. It's got places for the screws to go into. And again, it's got a quarter 20 in the center. Uh, this would be a very quick way to mount any of the three, not just the jelly bean, any three inch, uh, three inch switch would work just fine on this one. So this is a truly ancient uh, Big Mac from many, many years gone by. And you'll see we have a design that fits the Big Mac as well. This is kind of a prototype. It doesn't have a T-nut in the middle. But the design file is still available if you want somebody to uh, print you one to hold your Big Mac on a, on a mount. It does fit the newer Big Macs as well. Uh, AbleNet was good enough to keep the, the mounting holes in the same position. Uh, so I just use this one for testing. All right, and this is a candy corn. If you've never seen one of these, this is a candy corn proximity switch. Um, it's a very, very light touch, capacitive touch switch. Uh, it actually will work even if you're not quite touching the button. It's, uh, if you've ever tried to mount it, it's got these little tiny screws. And these things are truly, truly tiny. Um, and uh, it does have a magnet in it, which is great, so you can just pop it onto things. But if you wanted to mount it more permanently, uh, it's not an easy thing to mount. So we made uh, a backpack for it here. It leaves space for the switch. It leaves space for the little button you have to press, press to change the battery. Uh, and again, you can see it's got the quarter 20 thread on the inside here. Uh, so this one turned out great. Um, I'm happy that this is uh, uh, looks as, as natural as it does, but it really does allow you to put this anywhere you need it and keep it in place. And finally, here's one that isn't quite done yet, but it is in progress. Uh, Jonathan from uh, uh, Adaptivations uh, gave me at ATIA one of the Honeybee switches to, to kind of play with and measure. Uh, and we have uh, mocked up and, and designed the enclosure for this. You'll see it'll have a quarter 20 in here as well. Uh, we simply haven't uh, received the test equipment to test it yet, so we're not ready to release it. But this is one that'll actually have it slide into uh, the housing, kind of like a, a cell phone holder. Uh, it will hold the, uh, hold the switch in place while leaving access to the uh, infrared sensor, which is up in this area right here. Now at this point you might be wondering what's the big deal? I mean it's just another way to mount a switch, right? So I want to go through a few of the things that uh, make the quarter 20 mount so uh, interesting for mounting switches. Uh, the first is the number of different styles you can get. So this is, this is a four dollar mount. Uh, it is a clamp. It very quickly will unclamp and pop off of any, um, any pipe. It, fits any size from about a half inch to maybe an inch and a half. So any bed rail, anything like that, if you wanted to mount a switch onto it, you just push down like this, and now you've got a mount point. You can very quickly screw on your switch, position it however you want, and in no time you've got it mounted exactly where you need it for like five bucks. Similarly, here's a $6 gooseneck, right? So this tool right here clamps on to uh, your desk or whatever you want, and you can twist it and it'll hold that shape uh, and place the, the switch exactly where you want to position it. Uh, again, I think uh, everything here except for the blue dinosaur looking mount was under $10. Uh, one of them might be $10.95, but they were all in the $10 to $20 range, including the most expensive. Uh, and again, that's why this is so exciting. There are over 3,200 products on Amazon with four stars or higher that have a quarter 20 mount and are meant for, for holding camera gear and equipment. 
Here's another mount. This one is uh, an articulating arm. Might seem more familiar to those of you who've used uh, mounts in the AT space. Once you position your, your arm where you want it, maybe right up here and facing the camera, I have a single screw. If I twist it tight, it, all of the different joints now lock in place. And I now have access to that exactly where I want it. If I need to move it, it's again one screw, untwist it, move it to a completely different position, and tighten it back up. Again, everything on here was under $20. I think that was about, uh, about $10, about $8, eight or $10. Uh, you might find them listed under Manfrotto Style Arm. Manfrotto is a brand name. You can pay for it. Uh, it's a good product. Certainly, it run more like $70 or $80. But these mini ones might be perfect for mounting a switch to a bed or just to some place that it's hard to get positioned. Now this one here certainly looks more like your traditional uh, tripod. It's even got a quick release top. So you can take your switch and just pop it in here. Uh, but this one actually, each of the, reg, each of the legs can completely uh, bend and be flexible so you can wrap it around uh, a post. You can make it shorter or longer. Uh, it's great for holding something in place um, kind of temporarily. Uh, maybe great for when you're on the go, uh, mounting something to a, sw a stroller car seat, things like that. Coming in closer, here's a, uh, here's a clamp that would work real well on maybe a bed sheet or uh, other clothing material, something that's, that's a little harder to slide under. Again, it'll hold your standard mount. Here's something more permanent. This is actually, uh, this will open all the way up and wrap around um, a standard uh, three, half, three-quarter, or one-inch rail. Uh, and again, it, this one doesn't uh, quick release. It's there for, for being a permanent mount. Uh, maybe putting onto a PVC pipe or uh, something else that you want to be able to position uh, your switch exactly onto uh, something that is cylindrical, a pipe of some shape uh, that's, that's in your, your area. And finally, if you've got a plate or you've got a tray and you want to mount a switch onto it, Here's a great option, five bucks. This is ridiculously tight on here uh, and really will not come off unless you not only pop here but also pull the tab to get it off. But it's a great way to mount a switch uh, onto a flat, smooth surface. All right, before we, before we wrap this up, uh, let's take one more look at the Migo. Migo. Uh, this is, it's very soft to the touch. It's by far the uh, most favorite of all the high school kids that we look at. It's got some neat features. I mean, probably the most interesting is the fact that the peg can actually pop out and move onto one of the arms. This is great because whether you're just placing it like this or you've got it wrapped around something, you can move the switch to wherever you want it. Another neat feature, it, it's, got, uh, it's got little grips on the back so it doesn't slide. And on two of the feet, it's actually got little slices here so you can put a ribbon in it or otherwise strap it to something. So this is something that it makes it makes sense that, that this exists in the camera space, especially with the small cameras like the GoPros around. But it's really useful in the switch arena, especially the small switch arena with uh, proximity switches like the Honeybee or the, uh, the Candy Corn or just the small micro light switches. This is something that might be able to get you exactly what you need in terms of positioning. Now some of you are thinking that's a long way to go to explain the camera mounts are cool. And you're right. But I see a lot of people on Facebook, I see a lot of people who are in the AT practice that we're talking to from AT makers, who spend a lot of time on positioning. I mean, one of the big, one of the big questions if you're on the SMA groups is, in fact, a lot of times it's just pride. Look at this great mount I came up with. And you look at it, and it is great, but there shouldn't be nearly this much work. Right? This is a problem that has been solved in the camera community for literally 50 years. 100 years is when the quarter 20 started, but for the last 50 years ago, there were lots of solutions for you. So we're really happy to be able to bring that option, those options to you. We have a set, like I said, of STL files. Um, if you don't know what those are, you can think of them as having a set of PDF files. You can print them out. If you have STL files and you bring them to your local uh, high school STEM program that has a 3D printer, they can print them for you and they can print them. We've got instructions for exactly how to insert the, uh, the T-nuts so that they add the threads for you. 
it should cost you at most a few dollars per mount. Uh, you, if they're out of filament, they might ask you to buy a roll of filament. That would be 20 bucks, but it would make a dozen mounts. So they, they, they probably will not ask you for anything except for perhaps to bring them the right T-nuts. That's all laid out in our guide. Uh, you can find it on AT Makers. It will be up probably the first week in February. That would be just a few days from now. So uh, by all means, join us on the AT Makers Facebook group. We're happy to have you. Whether you're an AT who's looking for solutions or you're a STEM program that is looking for something for your kids to do for service hours, we'd love to chat with you. We'd love to bring solutions like this to you so you can share them around the country, around the world. Uh, I want to thank everybody who helped me on this, uh, especially the folks at CCC uh, High School, also up in Maryland, uh, Loudoun County, uh, Mark Nichols, folks like that who've been, either encouraged us or, or actively helped us. And uh, I'm really proud of what we're doing here, and, and it's a lot of fun. I hope that you join us and that you help spread this.